atmosphere is changing now For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around That the Spirit of the Lord is here The atmosphere is changing now of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow in this place, fill our hearts with
It's the kingdom. 
desperate for the Spirit of God, for a fresh outpouring, for a fresh outpouring upon your life. Come on, church, if that's you this morning, would you lift your hands to Jesus? Some people, you are God and only God. They talk about you, but they don't know you. But to us, you are a father. The spirit, your spirit, the spirit of God, the spirit of our father, he lives in us. This morning, I thank you that you are so in love with every person. I thank you that this morning, yeah, be powerful. Yeah, you're so personal. 
this morning we just want to say thank you for loving us I, I, I just want to tell you something I guarantee you being almost 25 years in ministry I guarantee you that um, if you were healed if you were wholesome you will be courageous strong confident in absolutely any area of your life whatever you do whether it's family dynamic relationship whether it's job uh, whatever that is whatever area business finances uh, medicine arts whatever that is I guarantee you that if you are healed if you are wholesome if you are who God has called you to be you will be unstoppable you would simply be unstoppable and here's the crazy thing being healed is something that God's specializing in God specializes in healing restoring people just calling them back to who they were meant to be in his presence and it's so simple and it's available anytime it's available anytime even today even this morning 10 36 a.m. it's available so as we are singing we're not just singing because we're going through motion or this is a church style or stuff or whatever no this isn't religion this is we're saying Holy Spirit fill us up God would you fill me up would you heal me would you restore me would you fill up every void in my soul would you heal my spirit come on I just want to take a moment would you close your eyes it's very simple it's very basic there's no mystery to it it's just a desire all you need is this Lord fill me up oh, Jesus I need you Jesus I'm here today and it's not even about church or people around me it's about you and me it's about me needing you it's about me looking to be home in your presence Holy Spirit fill me up come on come on say that whether you're gonna be quietly or whispering or say it out of your heart come on can I have it just for a second just drums just drums and violin can we do that come on drums and violin can you say it? can you say Holy Spirit fill me up right now Holy Spirit fill me up right now in the name of Jesus I thank you that today I am healed today I am restored today I am wholesome fill me up it says my day today I didn't come to church I came to hang out with God I am home in the presence of God fill me up let me be strong let me be confident let me be courageous Jesus I'm standing tall I'm standing up I know who I am in Christ because Spirit of God healeth me he's healing me restoring me yep I let go of the things the unforgiveness I let go the betrayal I let go the lies that I believe I let go the fears that I had the demons that were chasing me and some of them owned me I let it go because God is in control over my life because God is so powerful because God is so in love with me because his purpose is to have me in the palm of his hand to embrace me to hold me to love me to care for me it says my God this is my God I'm talking about devil hear me well I'm talking about my God in the name of Jesus fill me up Lord fill me up my faith is strong my faith is strong today I make my decision that Jesus is my Savior he owns my soul he is my God yes he is my loving father thank you <laughs> there's no other place I'd rather be but the presence of God there's no other place I'd rather be but know that the Spirit of God lives in me this is home come on say it. this is home in Jesus name in Jesus name come on say I received that can you say it loud say I receive don't be arrogant standing just say I receive that now in Jesus name come on God is so good amen worship band thank you for leading us so well phenomenal as always we love you 
Thank you for hanging out with us today. A beautiful Sunday morning, a warm <laughs> end of summer. I mean, end of May, beginning of summer. Phenomenal, amazing, awesome. Find the most comfortable seat and watch this video. Let's go. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. That has a beautiful ring to it, huh? We're so glad you joined us this morning. And we're looking forward to what God is about to do in this place. But first, let's check out this video. Hello, good morning, church. My name is Josh, and I want to take a moment and welcome you to the Emma Church. Whether you are joining us here online or here at our physical location in Bothell, welcome to the family. We hope that you find that this is a place where everyone simply belongs. If you're new here or want to know more about the Emma Church, please stop by the Info Center here in the foyer, or simply take out your phone and text ABOUT to 77948. We cannot wait to meet you and hear your story. Connect groups are meeting across the week, and they're the best place to build lasting friendships and talk more about Jesus. If you haven't had the opportunity to find a group yet, no worries. Simply take out your phone and text C-Group, that is one word, C-Group, to 77948, or simply stop by the Connect Center. Let's do life together. Be sure to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, or download our app to keep up to date with all the upcoming events. With all that being said, thank you for joining us this morning. Here are some upcoming events. We'd love to see you there. Hello, Image Church family. Another way of worship is giving. And this morning, we want to give you opportunity to partner together with us and worship our Lord with what He has given us and what He has entrusted us. We want to thank you. We want to take a moment and say thank you for honoring God, for being faithful, for sowing in His kingdom. And because of your love and generosity, we're in this building and we're able to gather in person. I want to release a blessing over you and just thank God for you. Father, I thank you for blessing your people. I thank you for pouring out. I thank that you're God of provision and I just speak that release over your people, over your church in the name of Jesus. Be blessed, and here's four ways how you can give. We love you. Please take this time to silence your cell phone, and if you need to get up for any reason, please do so at this time. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the service. All right, all right, all right. I am so excited that we have um, one of our very own, the son of the house, son in faith of the house. Are you excited? Mish Fomenko is here from all the way from Los Angeles. I am so excited. You're going to love it today. Say, so whatever is going to happen today, I'm not responsible. I'm just telling you right now as a pastor... You know, just full disclosure, I'm not responsible. This is a California thingy that we're going to, I don't know, I'm joking. Um, yes, Moldova, yes, the country in Europe. Um, thank you for hanging out with us, but we're going to have a great time. God is good. His presence is powerful. Pastor Mish, we love you. Welcome home. God bless you. What an honor. Check one, two, three. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. I hear myself. Thank the Lord for that. What an honor to be here with you, Image Church. Are you, are you excited to be here today? Yes. Come on, I like this. I like the responsiveness. This is good. Um, for me, it's always an honor to be here. It truly, really is. Um, the place where it all started for me, it's the place where, um, where I literally stepped into ministry and got released into ministry. And so for me, this will always be special. And I will, I will full, oh, for all, forever, for always, is that even a thing, for always? I will for always be uh, a son of the house, and in, in fact, I, 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 to this day, wear my, my Image Church logo on my ring, the place where I got ordained, the place where I got called to ministry, and the place where it started and now has taken me all over the world 
And so I love you, Image Church. You're in a great place. This is a place that releases people to do what God has called them to do. Amen? So I don't know what sphere of influence God has called you to influence, but this is the place that's going to release you to do that in your workplace, in your school, in your families, uh, wherever that may be. Amen? Do you believe that? Amen. You guys love your pastors? Come on, we love you. Pastor John and Vita, you guys are the best. And uh, yesterday we got a chance to hang out, and it was just like, it was like the good old days. Like, uh, the thing I love about Pastor John, he's, he's not just strong in, uh, in, in, in revelation knowledge and in, in the word, but he's one of the like, easiest people to be around. You guys know this. Like, just spending time with him and you guys, Pastor Vita, you guys are like family and like, feels like nothing skipped a beat. Like, we just had a, t- oh, it was a good time. Still loves food. Still, I don't know how he still drinks Coke. In the name of Jesus, maybe we can, we, maybe we can set, that, set him free tonight. Um, I'm so excited today to talk to you from one of my favorite topics, and um, we had Pentecost Sunday last weekend. How many of you guys love Pentecost? <laughs> Pentecost is the, birth, the birthday of the church, really. It's, it, it's when the church literally became what, what it's called to be, and I love, I love what happened on Mount Zion. In, um, is, is, uh, the Holy Spirit didn't just come on the 120 that were in the upper room. We know that part, right? They were in the upper room. The Holy Spirit came upon them, and then they went to Mount Zion, and I love what happened on Mount Zion because Mount Zion is actually a picture of the reversal of what happened on Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai was when Moses went up to the top and uh, got the law. The law was given. Remember what happened when the law came? When the law came, there was 3,000 that died because the law kills. The, letter, the Bible says the letter kills, but the spirit, what? Gives life. The law kills but the spirit gives life. In fact, the first thing the law did when he came down, 3,000 died. But I love that Mount Sinai was a reversal of what happened with the law. Come on, how many of you guys know that the law was never God's original intent for mankind to follow? Man wanted the law because, and in fact, it's always referred to as the law of Moses and is not referred to as the law of God. It's referred to as the law of Moses because God gave Moses something that people could follow because they didn't want to follow God, they wanted to follow the man who delivered them because their interpretation of God was where they came from for generations of slavery under Pharaoh. Pharaoh considered himself as God and so they looked at themselves as people who came from God, Pharaoh. And so they're like, we don't want to serve another God. We want to serve Moses. He's our deliverer. He's our redeemer. He's the one that sets us free. So we want to serve Moses. So God gave the law to Moses for them to fulfill. That was never his original intention. We don't have time for that today. But imagine this. Now, when the law came, Kill people. In fact, God gave 10, Moses made 700, or however many there were. 613? Wow. <laughs> he made a bunch more. It's like, dude, 10's enough. Just, just focus on those and you're good to go. I mean, all the other stuff, Moses just feels like he's the man. Anyways, and now we have the New Testament. Oh, I love it. And I love that Jesus left. Anybody, anyone happy that Jesus left? In fact, if Jesus didn't leave, then we wouldn't have the Holy Spirit here on earth today. And so he's like, it is good that I go. So Jesus, thank you for leaving. You left the earth, but you didn't leave the atmosphere of us. We are, right? Amen? He, he still as, works as much as he did when he was physically on earth. But now he, he does it through multiplication because the same spirit that was in Jesus and the same Holy Spirit that resurrected hit Jesus from the dead. Come on now, the Holy Spirit resurrected Jesus from the dead and he now lives in us. Who's us? Every human being on earth? To who? Believers, the church, exactly. People who believe, not just people who show up to church, right? Those who believe, all of a sudden now he resides in them. And so now we see Mount Sinai and then we see Mount Zion. And on Mount Zion, they come up and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit fell. 3,000 were added to the church. 3,000 after 3,000 died because of the law. Now the reversal, 3,000 came and were given a brand new life. And the Bible says they were baptized when they received the Holy Spirit. Come on, that's incredible. And so I, I want to talk to you, um, continue, continuing that um, um, in, the, in, in the chronology of how this Holy Spirit began to come on earth. And I want to go, w- come with me to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10 is one of my favorite passages in the Bible because it's when the Holy Spirit became available for everyone. In John chapter 20, when, the, when, when, when Jesus blew on the disciples, it was just for the disciples in the room, the, the 11, because the other guy, we know the story. Right? He blew on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. That was the first moment where the Holy Spirit came and resided in someone. Then the 120, in Acts chapter 2, the, one, uh, the 120 were baptized um, 
that uh, the Holy Spirit came upon them, not just within, but now came upon them, right? And that was for the 120. Then Mount Zion was for the Jews. Mount Zion is where the revival spread through the Jews, and the Jews now had the Holy Spirit. And then chapter 10 was when all the rest of us, all, all of us all, the Gentiles, the non-Jews, began to receive the Holy Spirit. Amen? So I, I love this passage because this is, Acts chapter 10 is the pivotal chapter where the gospel begins to spread to the entire humanity. And I love it. And so uh, the title of my message today is Holy Spirit Fall. Turn to your neighbor and say, Holy Spirit Fall. Say, uh, turn to your other neighbor and say, Holy Spirit, fall on this person and point to him. Fall, your fall on him or her. Come on now. Now point to the other person. Fall on me too. Amen, 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 amen. Father, we thank you for your presence here. God, we thank you that you sent us the spirit. And he's the spirit of truth that guides us into all truth. And so we thank you that we will worship you now in spirit and in truth. And God, I declare over this church, I just feel it in my heart right now that this church is going to be the right kind of balanced church. It's going to be the church that's full of the spirit and full of truth, strong in truth. There's a lot of churches strong in fluff and strong in inspiration, but God, I think there's going to be a church that's strong in truth and, 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 and strong doctrine and strong belief system and strong foundation, but also this is a church that's going to be operating in the spirit and the things of the spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we declare there's going to be a holy balance here. A holy balance of a church that's led by the Spirit, but also is, is uh, grounded in the depth of the Word of God in truth. And so we thank you. We release that over every single person, over every leader, over this church. This is a church that worships God in spirit and in truth. In the mighty name of Jesus. And if you receive that word today, you say amen. amen. Come on. I love the energy in this room. Honestly, as I, as I walked in during worship, I just felt like, almost like it's, it's the next season. I almost felt like it's, there's something like, you just feel like, the atmosphere has shifted here. Come on, we got two other people in here that feel that. It's almost like there's, a, a, you walk into a place where it's like a freshness. You know what I mean? You know, you know when, you, when you walk into a place and it's like a stale room after your middle school, you know, you know uh, students have been sleeping all night and wrestling, whatever they do. I'm a youth pastor, I know what that smell feels like, right? And it's just like that ugh, stale, but then you, when you walk into a place and you walk, you're walking by the ocean or you're walking in Seattle, anywhere, it's just fresh. It's like, ah. Oh. And I just felt when I walked in here, it's like a freshness, a freshness in the atmosphere. And, I've, and in this freshness, it's a miraculous atmosphere. It's a powerful atmosphere. It's a life-changing atmosphere. It's an atmosphere where you begin to get freedom. And I believe we're going to begin to tap into this even today, continue, ta continue tapping into it. And I believe there's something that literally God is starting and continuing in this church. So get ready, guys. Something's happening here. And as you expect, so be it unto you. The Bible says, as your faith so be it unto you. And I don't want to just say that to puff up in excitement, but I want, to, I, want to, I want to share that. That's what I feel in the spirit. Because then as your faith, so be it unto you. And watch what's going to begin to happen in your life as you begin to show up to church with such a faith. Like, what's God going to do today? Who's going to get touched today? Who's going to get set free today? Who's going to get healed? Whose marriage is going to be restored? What's God going to do in this atmosphere today? And it's in here. And I'm telling you what, the more faith you got, you can feel it from the worship team today. Come on, you guys crushed it. You can, you can feel it in the leadership um, retreat that we had over the weekend. You can just feel it. So get ready. God's doing something supernatural. And I believe today people are going to get transformed. People are going to be set free today. And people are going to be healed today. God already showed me some people who are going to get healed in this place today. So Acts chapter 10. Uh, for the sake of time, I don't want to read the whole chapter because it's, it's, it's pretty cool, but you should read it when you get home uh, or sometime this week when you, when you have a chance. It starts off with Peter, well, it starts off with Cornelius. Cornelius, see, who's a Gentile, who sees God doing something with the Jewish people. And he's like, man, there's something there that they have that we need and that we want. And he began, his, he even, his faith even started building up before he even knew what faith was. He all of a sudden started, the Bible says he was a God-fearing man. He was, he, he was a Gentile. He didn't understand the spirit stuff yet. But he saw something in the Jewish culture, and he actually gave money to the Jewish culture. I don't, we don't got time for a finances situation, but I'm telling you what, what you give to is what you'll receive from. I don't have time to go into this, but to the level of you giving to Image Church is the level that you're going to receive from Image Church. And this guy, as he gave to the Jewish people, now all of a sudden he became the person that God used to spread revival to the rest of humanity because of his giving. So the Bible says, if you don't like it, just look at the Bible. Come on, generosity does something inside of us. And so all of a sudden, he was a, the Bible says he was a generous man. He loved to give. And, and, and he wanted what they had. And so he says, send my guys to Peter. Peter's up, uh, 
praying one day, and all of a sudden he has a visitation from God. The Bible says he goes into a trance where this vision comes on, and he sees, he sees this sheet come down with all these animals. And the Jewish culture, Peter is a kosher guy. He's like, no pork, no shrimp, you know, like this guy, everything kosher. Like this guy, this guy has fulfilled the law from a childhood. And all of a sudden now he sees all this food, and, he, and all of a sudden he hears this voice from heaven, and God says in this vision to him, he says, go or get, um, kill and eat. He says, Peter, go, kill, eat. Peter's like offended. So God had to tell him three times. Three times the Bible, the Bible says that he showed this to him. And, and then God says something to him, do not call unclean what I have already made clean. Do not call unclean what I have made clean. Not what I can make clean, not what I will make clean, not one day if you attain, if you pray and fast, then maybe you can be clean. But what I have already made on the cross, clean. Jesus took every sickness, he took every disease, he took every sin on himself on the cross. He took all of it. He took your depression, he took your fear, he took all of it on himself on the cross. He took it for us so we don't have to, do, so we don't have to live with it. And as he took it on himself, now the voice is speaking to Peter and the voice says, do not call unclean what I have already made clean. It's clean. The problem is they don't know it yet. And so Peter is now thinking three times, his voice said to him, don't call unclean. What what, what have I already made clean? He's thinking, he's like, ah, but they're unholy. And actually Gentiles, the word, the slang that was used in that culture was unclean. So when they see Gentiles, they'd be like, oh, they're unclean. They're not like us. And so there was like this elitism in the Jewish culture. There was like this elitism, like we're Jews, we're the chosen nation. You, unclean, unclean. We are the chosen ones. We're the ones. So imagine Peter coming from this mindset that I'm elite, I'm the man, I'm an amazing preacher, and all of a sudden now God's like, go to them. And he's like, where am I going? What am I doing? This is incredible. So imagine, sometimes things happen in the spirit, but they don't manifest yet in your revelation of, of, your, of your soul yet. There are some things that you receive in your spirit that sometimes take, there's things that Pastor John's gonna be preaching to you that are gonna be caught in your spirit, but maybe your mind isn't renewed yet to actually figure it out. This is one of those moments. Peter gets a revelation, but he doesn't have the full understanding revelation of it yet in his soul. In the spirit, boom, downloaded. The soul is still catching up. His mind is still being renewed by what just happened with God. And all of a sudden now, um, the, the chapter goes on, uh, they come to the door. He goes with them. He's like, I don't even know where I'm going. He goes with them to Cornelius' house, to Gentile territory, a Gentile house. And Cornelius had a bunch of people there waiting because they're like, man, whatever you guys received, we want that. Whatever you guys are walking in, we need that because there's something powerful about it. Peter walks into this house, and Peter's shocked. He's like, first of all, what am I doing with the Gentiles, unclean people? I'm the guy that, like, pushed them away all the time. Now I'm the guy in their house. Peter's like, how am I? So sometimes you show up places, like, how did I show up in this place? It's probably a divine moment. If you're thinking, how did I get here? How did I get into this hospital room? How did I get into around this family? How did I get around this person? Maybe there's something God's trying to release to you. And so Peter shows up in this place, and he's like, man, what's going on? And all of a sudden now, Peter begins to share about Jesus. And he literally talks about how Jesus came down to earth, and he walked full of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that... Um, and Peter began to share that he would heal them and people would be delivered of demons and all that. He began to share how Jesus walked on earth. And then the Bible says that P- Peter was explaining to them that Jesus came down and then he was um, crucified and he was resurrected from that. He's sharing the gospel story. And then we pick up in verse 43. Throw verse, verse 43 up on the screen for me real quick. Check this out. Verse 43. All the prophets testified to him. What does that mean? All the prophets basically Throughout the whole Old Testament, there's been prophecy of the one that is to come that would deliver people, set people free, the Messiah, the Lord, and it's been prophesied for thousands of years now. And so Peter's saying, so Peter's, as he's preaching, just share the story of Jesus, and look what he's saying, he's saying, all the prophets testify of him, this is the one, and now I'm testifying about him, this is the one, he's the one, Jesus is the one, that through him, That through his name, everyone who what? How many? Some? Only Jews? Only white people? Only Brazilians? Where's my Brazilians at? There they are. We got one Brazilian left in this church? My goodness. We need a revival in here again of Brazilians. No, it's everyone who believes. Come on now. 
What happens when everyone who believes in him, what happens? Receives what? Forgiveness of what? Sins. Everyone who believes receives. Righteousness is not something you achieve. Righteousness is something that you receive when you believe. Righteousness is not something that happens by works. It's something that you receive, not achieve. Come on now. And so he's saying here today, can you throw up real quick? This is a random verse. It just came to my mind. It's uh, 1 Corinthians 2.12. If, if, we, if we can get that ready, sound team, you guys are amazing. I'm so sorry for throwing a spontaneous verse on you. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2.12. I, lo- I love this about the Holy Spirit is he now gives you something. Sh- can we give it up for the sound team? My God, and the media team. <laughs> Salute. You guys are definitely trained well here. So check this out. Watch this. Now we have not received the spirit of the world, different spirit. Not the spirit of the media. Come on now. Not the spirit of politics. Come on now. Not the spirit of culture. Come on now. Not the spirit of your nation or your culture or your, or your ancestors, but the spirit who is what? God, from God. That we may know what? The things, what, what do we know? The things what? Freely given to us by God. What is the role of the Holy Spirit today? He shows us what's ours. He shows us that you're forgiven. He shows us that you have healing. He shows us that you have righteousness. He shows you who you are, your identity, that, that, that you're strong and courageous, that you're above and not beneath. He shows you who you are. So come on, the, 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 the world needs the Holy Spirit. And how many of you guys know that we, we are living in the era of the Holy Spirit? Right? There's three manifestations of the Holy Spirit on earth today. Right? He's with us, he's within us, and he's upon us. He's with us. That started from the moment Jesus went up and the Holy Spirit came on earth. And he never left. Come on now. He never left. The Bible says, in the last days I shall what? Pour out my spirit, and they're going to prophesy, and all these things are going to happen, right? Guess what? People are talking about, oh, the last days, the last days. Guess what? We've been in the last days for 2,000 years, so welcome to the party. (laughs) Oh, my God, the last days. We've been here for a long time. Welcome. It's been about 2,000 years of the last days. I'm glad you you finally figured out we're in the last days. The last days started when the spirit came, and so the spirit is with us on earth today. He's here. So stop freaking out about the last days. You should have started freaking out before you were born. (laughs) You were born into the last days. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit. He poured out his spirit, and all of a sudden, now he's with us on earth. The second manifestation, he's within us at the moment we believe. The moment we say yes, boom, that's the the moment of the breath of, of, of Jesus blowing, and then now the spirit lives within us. Now we have the breath of Jesus, which is the spirit of Jesus living inside of us. That's the second manifestation. He's with us. He's within us. And the third one is he comes upon us. He's within us for us. He's upon us for everybody around us. Right? The upon is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The upon is, is, is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's what we begin to give to others. He's in us for me, and he comes upon us for others, right? And so here we see the upon of the Holy Spirit beginning to fall. And so Peter's preaching, and he's saying, hey, listen, I want to tell you what happens, what you've freely been given. The problem is the world has been given a lot of gifts, but they don't know what's available for them. The world doesn't know that forgiveness is available for them. The world doesn't know that healing is available for them. The world doesn't know that um, anything of God, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, And all y'all need self-control in the name of Jesus. It's already been given. And so the Spirit now shows us, as Paul says to the Corinthian church, the Spirit now shows us the things that have freely been given us. Come on, I'm getting hot in here. The Holy Spirit's Spirit's in this place. It's getting warm. Benny Hinn style. (laughs) And so the Holy Spirit now comes upon us, and in this story, he, he's showing you what's freely been given because grace gives, but faith receives. In fact, grace doesn't just give, grace has given. And so Peter's preaching, and what's Peter preaching? Jesus, and then he says that when you believe, now you can activate what's already been given you. Forgiveness has, is all on earth. Salvation is on earth. Healing is on earth. It's here. The problem isn't should we get it or not. The problem is it's here. We now need to know how to receive it. Come on. I can, I can buy you a brand new Tesla, and I can put the keys somewhere parked in a garage. And if you never know that it's yours with your name on the title, you'll never drive it. Come on. It can be paid for. It can be bought. And you can have free charging for the rest of your life. It's, it's yours. 
But the problem is, if you don't know that it's paid for you and it's in a garage located somewhere, you'll never drive it, right? And so, the, and so Peter is preaching to them and saying, hey, listen, there is forgiveness available for you, and you receive it when you believe. So he's preaching on. What is Peter preaching about? He's preaching about the, what Jesus did and now what we can have in the Holy Spirit. And so as he, as he preaches, next verse, look what happens. The Jewish believers came to... Uh, go, can you go back real quick? Uh, verse 44. Verse 44. There it is. While Peter, while Peter was still speaking these words, in the middle of his message, he didn't even finish preaching yet. Oh, I love this. Because faith is activated not when someone says, okay, now it's time for the altar call. Faith is activated in the moment that something's happening. You can have faith happen right now. You can get healed where you're sitting right now. It has nothing to do with me finishing and creating an atmosphere with the worship team and doing something. And we love doing that. I love doing that. But it's not about that. It's about your faith. And while Peter was still preaching, he didn't give an altar call. He didn't explain anything about the Holy Spirit. He didn't talk about tongues. Here's how tongue works. Here's the four manifestations of tongues. One tongue is you speak in your earthly language. Another tongue is someone has to interpret you. Another tongue is, is, is when you literally speak in a different earthly language. And another tongue is when you intercede for others. And there's all these. He didn't even teach about that. Come on now. He just began to share about Jesus and what Jesus has made available, which is forgiveness, which is righteousness. Righteousness is on earth today. The problem is we're not receiving what's been given because grace gave, but we haven't by faith yet taken it for us. And so Peter says, listen, you have forgiveness available. If you believe it's yours, it's yours. Receive that forgiveness. While he was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell. Someone say Holy Spirit fall. The Holy Spirit fell upon all those who were listening, or another translation says, all those who heard. This listening isn't a physical listening. This listening is a spiritual listening. How many of you guys know you got two sets of ears, right? You got the spiritual ear, what no ear has yet heard. What no ear, that's talking about the physical one, has yet heard is in the spirit. This isn't talking about people who just heard noise that's coming out of someone's mouth. This is talking about people who actually by faith heard. Like, wow. Peter, I want that. I don't know what you guys are walking in. I, I, I heard about you guys doing this whole tongues thing. We don't understand it yet, but man, we believe in it, and it's amazing. We want this thing, and they just believed in it. While he was in the middle of preaching, he didn't even have his final point yet. He was in the middle of preaching still, and the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard that were listening to the message. And then verse 45, all the Jewish believers came to Peter, and they were amazed. The Jewish people were amazed. Because the gift of the Holy Spirit had also been poured out on the Gentiles, for they were, were hearing them speaking in tongues and exalting uh, God. Then Peter responded, Surely no one can refuse water for these who have been baptized. Long story short, they get filled with the Holy Spirit. They begin to pray in tongues without even knowing about tongues yet. And then they get baptized. Peter's like, how can we refuse that, what is given to us as Jews? How can we refuse that to them? Now here's, here's what's amazing. Peter, who was a prejudiced man, he was very into his own culture, into his own skin color, into, his, into himself, but yet God still came upon him and God still wanted to use him and God still gave a revelation. In fact, so much so that he didn't even understand the full revelation of it. The fact, so much so that later he's trying to tell Gentiles to act like him. When God says, do not call unclean what I've made clean, now he's trying to get the Gentiles to do kosher stuff. So later in Acts, we see Paul with the spirit of slap on him that's the same when Pastor John walks in. He's like, Peter, what's wrong with you? And he literally begins to discipline Peter in a way. He's like, Peter, you're the one that got the revelation. Why are you now trying to get the Gentiles to do Jewish cultures? They don't even understand what you're talking about. They're not raised in it. So uh, Peter, being a prejudiced man, full of himself, doesn't, didn't even get the fullness of this revelation that God released through Peter. We had the Paul ended up then writing to the, ch uh, to, to the churches and explaining the revelation Peter actually got. Paul's the one that actually took it to the, to the detail and, and, and gave the teaching behind all, all the stuff that, that Peter received. And so imagine, they get filled with the Holy Spirit, and look what happens next. When the Spirit of God shows up, every religious spirit and person rises up. Go to chapter two, uh, chapter uh, 11, in the next chapter. Watch verse two. When Peter came up to, the, to Jerusalem, the Jewish believers took issue with him. Is that, is that all verse 2? I love this. When the Holy Spirit moves, religion has an issue. The moment God begins to do something that's outside of your mental capacity, why do we try to trap God inside of what I can comprehend? The moment I try to trap God by what I can comprehend is the moment I take God to my level of understanding. 
And now I can only receive from that God that's on my level of understanding. I can't receive from a supernatural God that knows way more than I can ever understand. I, I, I can't receive from a God that, 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 that I don't even have a wonder of what he can possibly do. But everything has to be logical, has to make sense. And so we condense God down to our soul level of understanding and intellect. Are you kidding me? And that's what Christianity is, that's what a lot of Christians do. And so the moment the Holy Spirit begins to do something that does not make sense to your natural soul, because like, we are spirit beings, right? But it doesn't make sense to your natural mind. It's called, guess what? It's called supernatural. And it's awesome. I'm a product of it. I have been touched by it. I have been transformed by it. And I've seen God do incredible things. And so it's all of a sudden now the religion comes against the move of God. And so all the religious leaders, Peter comes back to, to the Jewish people. And the Jewish people are like, Peter, what are you doing? Why are you giving to the unclean what's ours? Why would you do that? Come on, when the spirit begins to move, he's going to do things that don't make sense to your rationality. And all of a sudden, look at verse 15. Check this out. Fast forward, fast forward. And as they began to speak, the Holy Spirit, so Peter's now explaining to them the whole story. And as they began to, as I began to speak, he's like, as I'm preaching, as I'm preaching to them, the Holy Spirit fell, someone say fell, upon them just as he did upon us at the beginning. So Peter's now giving an explanation. Guys, listen. What can we do about it? Next verse, verse 16, or 17, I think it's verse 17. Therefore, if God gave them the same gift as he gave us after uh, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could not stand in God's way? So Peter's sitting here like, man, like, how can I say something against what God is doing? And I'm telling you what, sometimes we come against what God is doing because it doesn't make sense to our carnal mindset, because it doesn't make sense to our intellect, our degree. Come on, I'm a UW alumni. Let's go UW, any, any UW students up in this place? Go Huskies, purple and gold. It's the colors of heaven, it's what it, is. it is what it is. And it's not about what you know about reality, it's about knowing him, and when you know him, all of a sudden everything gets transformed, and all of a sudden, so we see that religion comes against him. Now I wanna go back to chapter 10, in the, in the verse 44 where it says, and the Holy Spirit fell upon them. I'm gonna wrap up, I can get the worship team to come back up here, we're gonna pray for people. If I can get the person to come back up here. Margarita, if you can come back up here. And you can even sing that song. You didn't even know we were talking about the Holy Spirit falling. And you, were, you had that song prepared already. Come on, somebody. I came in here and they were singing that song. I was like, of course, of course they are. Like, that, that's just what God does. He, he's, he, just, he lines things up when we don't even know. And check this out. The Bible says the Holy Spirit fell. Before, I used to think falling was like this power, this might. And it is. Part of it is that. But this word in the original language, when I began to research on it, because I teach a class on the Holy Spirit at our Bible college, and I, as, I began to, as I began to research it, and I, I looked up this word fall. I was just curious about it. What does it mean? This word fall is the Greek word epipito. Turn to your neighbor and say epipito. Turn to your other neighbor and say epipito. Holy Spirit epipito you. So watch this. You know what this word epipito means? Epipito is used 10 times in the New Testament, 10 times. Three times it talks about the Holy Spirit falling. Three times, it talks about fear falling. Three times about the Holy Spirit, three times about fear, and four times this word is used in its actual context of what it means. Come over here, man. Just can you stand over here real quick? You know what this word means? This word epipito, Holy Spirit falling, fear falling, you know what it means? It's an actual, literal, four times it's used as an actual, literal, physical hug. And it's not just like a cute little Christian side hug. It's like a gripping hug. This word literally, epipito, literally means like a gripping love hug. Same thing that fear does to you, same thing that the Holy Spirit does to you is what do they want to do? What does fear do? Fear begins to hold you. And I'm telling you, when fear begins to get a hold of you, it's hard to get off of him. It's hard to get him off. You're all of a sudden, now you're afraid of everything. You're afraid of that and that and that. You're, you're just living in fear. And that's exactly what the Holy Spirit does, is he comes and he holds you. You can go, but you, you, you can go back to your spot, my man. And all the, what he does is he comes upon you, and this word epipito, when I saw it, it jacked me up. It messed me up so good. When I saw this word epipito is actual a physical hug, it shook me. One time in the Bible is when Paul was preaching, and Paul was clearly not as, as uh, entertaining as I was because the guy fell asleep. Thank God no one here fell asleep yet. And this guy, I forget his name, eucalyptus or something, what's his name? 
Euspis, eucalyptus, whatever, close enough. This boy falls asleep on the windowsill, right? Paul's clearly boring. He falls out of the window, you know the story, what happens? And he, he dies. The Bible says that Paul stopped teaching. Sometimes we need someone to die for the guy to stop teaching, my goodness, right? He comes out and the Bible uses this word epipito and he epipitoed on him and he fell upon him. This hug, this spirit hug, this love hug of the spirit raises the dead. This love hug heals the sick. This love hug casts out demons. This hug, I didn't even understand this idea, this concept till only a few years ago when I was going into it and touching in, in, a, in a researching, teaching this subject. And when I saw the Paul epipitot on him, he came upon him and he gripped him with the grip of heaven and bam, he resurrected the dead. You know another time that this, that this is used? The story of the lost son. When the son leaves and he's coming back to the father, and the father, the Bible says, sees him from a long way off. Remember the story, right? He sees him and he starts running, which is the craziest thing you can do. It's undignified. It's not cultural. And if you're a man of wealth and you're a man of power, you don't run. You get carried. Not only that, but they wore these skirt type things, dress things, right? And so if you're going to run, you got to lift that thing up and you got to run. Showing your ankles and your feet for a man of wealth was the most embarrassing thing you could do in that culture. And so he's running out to the sun and the Bible uses this word epipito and he fell upon his son and he held on to him and the son starts repenting. He wasn't repenting, he was hungry. We know, we know the reason why he wanted to come home. The Bible says, and when he thought his servants of the father ate so much good food, he didn't go because he felt bad for what he did. We, we preach that story like, oh, he was repenting. He wasn't repenting, he was hungry, which is okay. God receives you however you want. If you came here because a girl got you, it's all good. If you came here because somebody else got, it doesn't matter how you got here. All that matters is that you got here. And I actually, I actually love the fact that it wasn't his repentance that got him saved. It was actually his hunger that got him saved. Come on. Maybe you came here because you heard we got good coffee. My God, I'm glad you're here. Whatever it takes to get you here, we're going to see the Holy Spirit now come running at you. And this is what God does. He sees you from a long way off, even with the wrong mindset of why you're coming. He hugs him and he's holding him. And the son starts trying to repent. The father cuts him off in the middle of his repentance. And the father's like, the first thing he's like, quick, go get the robe. He, you have no idea who you are. You think you want to be a servant when you're a son. And he says, I have already prepared a fatted calf. I give him my best robe. And my robe is the symbol of who you are. This is who you are. And you know why the father ran out there and he epipetoed him? Because there was a, there was a tradition in the, in the Hebrew culture. It's called kaziah or something like that. Is, 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 is when they come out, the father never does this. It's usually the, um, the servants or, or, the, or the sons. They go out and they meet the son before they even step on a property. They meet them out there and they bring a jar. They bring a clay jar and they come in front of him. And what they do is they take this clay jar and they break it all over the ground as a symbol of our relationship is broken. You're not who you were when you left. Our relationship is broken. And not only that, what they would do in, in, in crazy situations because they, they were, Back then, wealth was farms. It wasn't stocks and bonds and Bitcoin. It was animals and manure. <laughs> so here's what they would do. In extreme situations, they would literally go and get manure of their animals. And they would cover the person with manure as they're walking in. It's called the, the walk of shame. And they're walking in with this broken jar as a symbol of you're not who you left. You're different. And so the father, knowing that this is the culture, he starts running out and he jumps on him and he grips him. He says, you're my son. I got you. We're quickly bring the best robe. Quickly bring, give him the ring for the, the, the ring for the authority. Quickly, quickly get in the shoes that, show, that talk about the purpose. Quickly go because my son is here. And all of a sudden he comes in. I'm telling you something here. Can we stand up on our feet? I don't know what you're going through in your life. But the Holy Spirit is here today and he wants to grip you. And his grip is not just a weak little grip. His grip is a grip that when he has you, he's got you. And when, and when, when no evil thing formed against you shall prosper, why? Because he's holding you, he's protecting you. He's like that shield around you. And when you know what's holding you, you live different. You talk different, you act different because something begins to come. And I believe that same epipet that was about to hit on some people today, that same hug, that same grip, that violent grip is about to get a hold of some people. I don't know what you're going through today, but I just felt so strongly today the Holy Spirit wanted me to speak on this, that He wants to hold your life 
Don't let the media hold your life. Don't let your political preference hold your life. Don't let somebody else's opinion hold your life. Come on, let the Spirit of God begin to hold you and begin to grip you because He's the only answer. Always has been the only answer, always will be the only answer. And He wants to get a hold of you. Now what's amazing is this is the same word that's used when fear grips you because fear doesn't want to let you go. And I've really felt so strongly we're gonna come against depression, anxiety, fear. This is one of the biggest issues in our generation right now. It was an issue before even the pandemic and it just escalated so much. Why? Because people are looking at the facts of life more than the life of the spirit. Because we know that religion kills, but the spirit gives life. You only have life when you're with him. You only have life when you're with him. And now you live with no fear. The Bible talks about that, that his love, who he is, he is love. And that love casts out, how much fear? All of it. As much as you're willing to get rid of, is as much as he's gonna set you free from. So I don't know who here today is battling anxiety. I don't know if you're watching online, maybe you're here, maybe you're afraid to even show up here because you're battling with this fear and this fear has gripped you so strong. Fear is a great tool. Media knows it and they use it. Sports use it, fear tactics to the other team. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen the, the Hawkeye in the, in the New Zealand. It's a fear tactic. Oh, oh, oh. Why? What do they do that for? Intimidate because fear is powerful. It grips you. And if the fear has you, the best trash talkers in the NBA, what is it? They're putting fear in your mind because fear grips you. And now you're deactivated from fulfilling your potential. My God. If I can get some fear and doubt in your mind, it's over. And that's exactly what the news does. So if you want to get set free from fear, maybe turn off the media for a little while. And maybe, maybe open up the word and maybe get the spirit to begin to flow. And all of a sudden, freedom is going to begin to come. So I don't, know, I don't know who's here today and you're battling with some, some fear, some depression, some anxiety. But man, God's here to set you free. God's here to set you free. Two weeks ago, I was in Seattle preaching at another location. And we were at a conference and, 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 and this guy comes in from the street. They were doing street evangelism. They, they bring a guy in. His name's William. They bring him in. And, uh, and, and these guys are trying to pray for him. The service is over. We prayed for everybody. We're about to leave. I'm about to leave. So I walk up to the front to grab my coat and my Bible from the, fr from, from, from the, from the front. And as I'm walking out, these guys are standing there trying to pray for this guy. They're like, Mish, come help, come help, come help. And these, these three guys are praying for this guy, William. So I walk up and what's going on? And you can tell right away there was a demonic, a demonic presence on him. You can just see it. You can sense it right away. So I walk over to him. And I said, do you know God wants to set you free? He starts quoting scripture. I'm like, oh my gosh. She's like, First, first, quoting, quoting, quoting. Like, Whoa. And I'm looking at him I'm like, bro, like, you're quoting the scripture from your mouth, but you actually don't even know in the revelation knowledge of what it is. I would say, God wants to forgive you. You quote verses on forgiveness. I say, God wants to set you free. You quote verses on freedom. And I'm like, who is this guy? And I'm sitting there trying to pray for him. I'm like, bro, just stop. Stop quoting scripture. My God. First time I ever told someone to stop quoting scripture. Like, stop it. Just listen to me. Repeat after me. Learned this from Pastor John back in the day. Repent, rebuke, renounce, <laughs> and then fill. Come on, the filling is the most important part, right? So we're up to walk him through this prayer that I learned here. Okay, repeat after me. Okay, do this. Okay, I can't get him through the prayer and I realized, and then it hit me as I'm trying to pray with him. He wasted about four minutes of my life by then. I'm like, I looked at him like, William, do you want to be set free? Yes, and I asked him, when do you want to be set free? Right now, are you sure? Yes, okay. Stop quoting scripture and repeat after me. And I realized, oh my God, this is the devil. The devil knows the Bible better than most people. He, he quoted the Bible to Jesus. And I remembered, oh my God, this is, and I looked at him, this is the demonic, this is him manifesting demons, quoting scripture. I've never seen anything like it in my life. He starts quoting, and I realized, I'm like, nobody knows the Bible like this. And I'm like, this is the devil. And I was like, I literally commanded that evil spirit to stop quoting the Bible. And literally in that moment, I was like, and I looked at him, I was like, listen, I was like, listen, William. I was like, don't waste my time. I don't want to waste your time. If you want to be set free, stop it. I literally said, I was like, stop it. You have authority over this guy. You're a believer now. You have authority. Stop that voice. I'm like, do you understand me? I'm going to leave if you do it one more time. He's like, I understand. Sometimes you got to put the pressure on him, right? We began to pray for him. He prayed the prayer. He exhaled. I'm telling you what, starts weeping. Freedom came over his life. 
I don't know what you're dealing with today. I don't know what kind of spirit is gripping you, but I felt so strongly there's freedom gonna show up in this place and it's gonna begin to set people free. So if you're here and there's anxiety, depression, fear, any of these emotions that are not love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, and gentleness, and self-control, if it's not from there, guess what? Let's get you set free. I want you to put your hand over your heart right now. Unbelief is gonna go right now. Watch what's gonna begin to happen. We're gonna begin to command the spirit to leave and watch, you're, even, you're gonna feel freedom come out of your, even, even from your chest. So Father, right now, if I can get a little bit more lights, house lights on real quick for a second. Father, right now we declare in this atmosphere, this is the atmosphere of the spirit of God. This is the atmosphere that happened on Mount Zion. This is the atmosphere that happened in Cornelius' house. This is the atmosphere of the spirit of God. If I can get the house lights just a little bit up, please. And so Father, we declare that you are Lord over this atmosphere and you are the one who sets free. As Peter was preaching and he's sharing that the Holy Spirit shows us everything that we need. And God, we declare that today in this atmosphere, there's a freedom available. In the name of Jesus, there's a freedom available. I don't know what it is that you're struggling with or dealing with, but I want you right now to take that need as if it's in your hand and put it over your heart. And now as a symbol of no, this is not gonna be an issue in my heart. This is not gonna be an issue in my mind. And I want you to put your hand over your heart. So Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bind all fear. Right now, we bind you. We bind all depression. We bind suicide in the name of Jesus. We bind anxiety in the name of Jesus. You have no place where the Spirit of God is. You have no place. And we command you to take your grip off of the people of God. Take your grip off these people in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, right now we declare there's a freedom. There's a freedom. There's a freedom. Now, why don't you take a big deep breath and exhale? Breathe in that freedom and breathe out all that toxic stuff right now in the name of Jesus. So, we just release that freedom to come. Begin to worship. Begin to worship. Now, I want you to lift your hands as you're free and watch how the hug of the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you right now. Come on, lift our hands. The fragrance of heaven, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, a holy anointing, the power of your presence, that over your mind. We release it over your family. We release it over your finances. We release it in the name of Jesus right now. Freedom. Pour your spirit out. The fragrance of Put your hands out, put your hands up and begin to receive the hug of heaven. Begin to receive the embrace of heaven. Begin to receive the grip of heaven. Thank you right now. Thank you for that spirit of freedom that is here right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now I want you to put your hands out like you're about to like you're about to give a hug to somebody. And I want you like it's a physical hug. And I want you just to like put your hands like this. And just let the spirit begin to move on you. Holy Spirit, come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your grip of your spirit. Come on, just put your hands, put your, put your arms like this, like you're like you're gripping him. Like he's gripping you. And God, we declare, we declare right now there's even a freedom and a breaking off of the grip of this world, of the intellect of this world. And we receive right now your presence in the name of Jesus. And some of you who, who have never spoken in tongues, never spoken in your heavenly language by faith. It happens by faith. It doesn't happen by your intellect. It happens by faith. Right now is your moment where you can begin to activate this. Father, we release even right now. If there's anybody here who wants to pray in the Holy Spirit, 
It wants, it wants us, that language of heaven. Right now, that, that language can come. The language can come, just like it did in the upper room, just like it did on Mount Zion, just like it did in Cornelius' house, just like it did throughout the book of Acts. And you can begin to pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. Come on, if you, if you have the gift of tongues, come on, I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. And if you don't, it's being activated in you even now in the name of Jesus. It's being activated in you even now in the name of Jesus. Father, we release that. We release that right now. Come on, just take 30 seconds. Just take 30 seconds and pray in the Holy Spirit. Come on, this is your time to be filled. And for the first time, to begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Come on, this is a Spirit-filled church that believes in the move of the Holy Spirit. Let me release that right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, some of you haven't done it in a long time, begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Come on, exercise that muscle because something is happening in this place right now. Something's happening in this place right now. Yes, yes, yes. Pour your spirit out. do something radical. Are you ready? I want you to turn to your neighbor who you love. I want you to give him a big hug. Give him a hug like the Holy Spirit's giving him a hug. Hug like you mean it, like a real hug. Give him a hug like a Holy Ghost hug and just hold him, just grip him for about five seconds. Give him a good, good hug. Just a good hug and just tell him, this is the Spirit of God hugging you. This is the Spirit of God through me. I'm telling you what, hugs are supernatural. You don't even realize it, but hugs are supernatural. And I declare this is a hugging church. In the name of Jesus, may hugs be restored in 2021 because they were lost in 2020. Hugs are being restored in the name of Jesus. Give somebody a hug. Give them a, give somebody else a hug. Come on. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is what he does. This is what epipito means. This is what Holy Spirit falling is. In fact, I'll never forget the story. We're gonna, we're gonna begin to wrap up here. When I was in Ukraine, and I, I literally, God told me, I'm going to heal this guy, this guy who was the last stage of cancer. Literally, the doctor said he was not going to live the next three weeks. Like, that's it. He's literally in the end. And his my wife comes up to me. She's like, Mish, can you pray for my, can you please pray for my husband? I was like, for sure. Let's see what God wants to do in the service, and I will. And here's what God told me. Like, while we were worshiping, he's like, you're going to pray for him, but you're not going to actually say any words. I'm going to heal him with my love. I didn't even know about Epipito yet. I was like, God, what does that mean? Heal him with our love. Like, that sounds cute, but what does that mean? He's like, you just follow my lead, Mish. So I get up to preach, and as I'm doing my intro, the guy sitting in the back, towards the back middle, and down the aisle, and he's like, you're the man, Alex, right? Yes, I got, I, I got the lymphoma cancer. Literally, that's it. I'm the guy. As he's walking up, God says, hug him. I didn't have this revelation yet. I was like, God, that's weird. I'm about to preach here. This is awkward. But you know what? I was so possessed by his spirit. I was so in his spirit that I was like, you know, I kind of don't care. And I walked over to the guy, as Alex is walking forward, I literally begin to put my arms around him. And as I'm holding him, I literally hear God saying, don't say a word over him. Just hug him and hold him. I ended up holding him for about eight to 10 minutes. You think it's awkward, but I'm telling you what, the father's love showed up in that room. And people, you could start hearing people beginning to weep throughout the room. And as I'm holding him, the guy's weeping, he's snotting all over my shoulder. I'm weeping, snotting all over his shoulder. I think I snot more than he snot. And then I'm telling you what, I told him, I was like, I've never done this in my life before, but don't do, any, don't do any chemotherapy. Next time you go to the doctor, say, I don't want any chemotherapy. Say, I'm healed, check me. And I'm like, I've never said that before. Like, if your knee's healed, if your knee hurts and it's got healed, cool. But I'm not gonna say, hey, you're healed of cancer, it's internal, I don't know, I can't see. But I felt so strong, I said, listen, I've never done this in my life. And I haven't done it since then. That was like seven, eight years ago, I think. I haven't done it since then. 
I was like, you're healed. Go to the doctor, don't do chemo. And I'm like, God, this better be right because if I mess this up, like, this is bad news. I mean, the guy was dying anyway, so I wasn't, you know. <laughs> For real though. And I said, don't do it because the chemo could have prolonged him maybe up to six months, they said. But he was literally like on his deathbed. And he went back to his, I flew back to America. His wife messages me on Facebook Messenger. She sends me the report. Look at the doctor report. She sends me the original one, dying, full of cancer, second scan, nothing. It, she said, it's as if he has new organs. Hug, I didn't even have that revelation until later. I'm like, oh my God, I was epi epipitoing him. I was like, that's amazing. That's amazing. So I just feel like God is, wants to touch some people even physically right now. He wants to, while he's hugging you, watch how your body is gonna be healed. There's somebody here, you have pain in your left knee. I felt it when you're worshiping, in your left knee. You have pain in your left knee. God's gonna heal you. And somebody else, in, uh, throughout your uh, neck, like in your, uh, your discs, vertebrae, in your neck, you have pain. Who, who, who is it that has pain in their left knee? Who's got pain in their left knee? God's gonna heal you. Come on, we got one right here. What's your name, my friend? Am Amando? Orlando, I like that. That's cool. Do you have pain in your knee right now? It's all gone? When did it leave? Oh, so you don't have any pain. Who's got pain in their left knee? You got pain in your left knee. Can you feel the pain right now? You feel the pain? You always feel the pain. Constant. What's your name? Candace, you're amazing. In my church, so blessed to have you. I'm so glad you're here. So Father, I thank you. That left knee, we command all pain go. In the name of Jesus. We bind it and we declare that as the spirit is embracing and holding her tight, we declare that the move of the spirit is through her body. And we declare knee pain that's been constant, go. Candace, be healed now in the name of Jesus. Every ligament, every tendon, kneecap, whatever's going on, we declare fullness of restoration. Pain, go. And don't you dare come back. Candace is a child of God. And we declare healing right now. Move it around real quick. Do a little squad. Do something. What are you feeling? Do you feel any pain? You don't feel any pain? Are you being honest with me? 100%. 100% set free. I love it. Who's got neck pain? Who's got neck pain? We're going to pray for other people too, but you got neck pain? Got a couple of people with neck pain? Put your own hand because the Holy Spirit's holding you. Put your own hand over your neck. Come on, we got a, we got a pregnant mom over here and, and a not pregnant mom over here, right? <laughs> okay. I know you guys, are. anyways, put your, put your hand over your neck. God, we declare over Sarah and over your daughter. Viviana, Brazilian, Brasileira. Colombia, hey, mommy. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare right now over Viviana and over Sarah in the name of Jesus. We declare every vertebrae, you become aligned in the name of Jesus. We declare every disc, be aligned. Nervous system, be aligned. All pain, go. Muscle pain, be gone right now. I know it doesn't make sense in the natural, but in the supernatural, it makes a lot of sense. And so Father, we declare all pain, even now, is leaving your body in the name of Jesus. Say, I receive it. Now move it around real quick. Move it around real quick. Tell me what you're feeling. Viviana, what are you feeling? You feel a difference? Yeah, you feel it? You had a lot of pressure and now? Less pressure. Anya, put your hands on her real quick. She's a Holy Ghost, fiery woman right here. Father, we thank you for less pressure, but we declare the fullness through your story. All pressure go. All pressure leave Viviana's body right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed. And God, we declare that this child she's bearing, we declare this child is gonna be full of your spirit. God, we declare this child is gonna prophesy. We declare this child is going to be full of the Spirit of God. He's going to be a Pentecost child. He's going to be a child that begins to release the Spirit language. And God, I thank you this child is going to be a gift to her life. This child is going to bring even healing and restoration to her family, to relationships. This child is going to bring uh, a newness and a freshness of the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. And God, we declare over Sarah right now, be healed fully. Sarah, how are you feeling? You feel a warmth. Come on, that's the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank you, Lord. Come on, he's moving. Who needs 
healing in their body right now. Anybody else? There's somebody with like, like a heartbeat problem. Who's got a heartbeat, heartbeat issue? Is that you? Put your hand over your heart. We declare life. We declare every heartbeat is going to be normalized in the name of Jesus. And I bless my brother in the name of Jesus. And God is even giving you, what's your name? Gordy. Gordy. God is even giving you, I feel like, a, just like there's a newness coming over you and a, a life, like a, like a fresh breath of life. There's a new life coming over you, a new energy. And the verse that comes to me is, you, you will mount up on wings as eagles. And you will not run and not grow weary, you will fly and not grow faint. And there's, a, there's, a, there's a, youth, a youthness coming on you, like never before, a youngness coming over you. You're going to feel it even physically. You're going to feel the energy spike. You're going to feel the Spirit of God coming on you. And you're going to feel it even in your physical body. So we release right now in the name of Jesus. We declare a normalness in the blood, normal in the heart, in the name of Jesus. And we declare a youthfulness. And God is going to redeem and restore things that you felt like were lost. Not only is he going to restore and redeem them, but I feel like God says, I'm going to even multiply those seasons. And I release that over you, Gordy, in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed now. Be healed now. If there's anybody else here, you need healing in your body. Put your right hand over the place in your body that you need healing right now. Put your right hand over the place in your body. Someone's ankle is about to be, about, about to be touched. I just saw that, someone's ankle. Put your right hand, if it's possible, if it's, if it's okay. If it's not, just put it over your heart. Put your hand over the place of your body that you need healing. Who needs healing? Lift your hand over. Show me real quick. Who needs physical healing right now? Come on, we got one, two, we got seven, eight hands going up. Put your hand over it in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for my throat right now. I'm taking a whole month off. This is my last message of preaching. I'm taking the whole month of June off. Canceled every, everything for voice rest. But we declare it's going to be supernatural in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Father, right now we bind all pain. We bind every sickness in the name of Jesus in this room. And we declare that Image Church is going to be known as a house of healing. It's going to be known as a house of healing in the mighty name of Jesus. So right now we come against all pain. We come against all sicknesses. We come against all diagnosis that is from doctors. We come against it and we speak life. We speak life. We speak life. The letter kills, but the Spirit brings life. And so we declare that in the atmosphere of the epipito, of the hug of the Spirit, we declare there's life coming into your body. Life coming into your body. Right now, that ankle being healed in the name of Jesus. Right now, back pain being healed in the name of Jesus. Right now, someone's pelvic, pelvic movement being healed in the name of Jesus. Right now, we release that. And we say, now be healed. Now try, now try doing something. Activate it. Move it around. Move it around. Move it around. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Move it around. Test it out. Test it out. Test it out. Find that healing. Find that healing in your ankle. Who's the ankle person? Is that you? Jump up and down on your ankle, bro. What are you feeling? Better. Keep jumping. Jump up and down again. Father, right now, fullness, fullness, fullness. In the name of Jesus. How is it? Good? How much good? How much percent better on a scale of one to 10? 10 being perfectly whole, restored. Six or seven. Father, we thank you for six or seven. But God, you didn't die for six or seven. You died for full freedom. In the name of Jesus. Fullness right now. Fullness right now. Try it again. Try it again. Move it around. Do, do, a, do a little loop to loop like this. Do a little loop to loop. How does that feel? Feels better. Is it done? Is healing done? Still a little bit of pain? Melissa, put your hands on him. He doesn't believe. Keep going. Margarita, put your hands out real quick. You're so powerful. I'm so proud of you. I miss the days that we used to flow together. And I walked in here today and watched this team and saw Angelina, and your brother on the keys. And my man Alex is always almost like brought back youth ministry days. And what I saw in you was I saw your foundation. I, like I felt, the feeling I felt was like you've hit a ceiling and you've hit like a feel like this like almost like a frustration it's almost like ah come on like why why are things not happening it's almost like a ceiling it's almost like that fish outgrew the fish tank or that plant outgrew the pot and usually in those moments what you do is you transplant it but I, what I felt for you was not a transplanting season I saw an expansion season I saw an expansion season where the foundation literally that's underground I saw like an underground I saw a picture of underground and like, 
and the expansion beginning to happen in the reservoir that was there, that was, had a capacity that was full. Now it's expanding, widening, it's going deeper. And this is a season you're walking into in a new grace. And there's gonna be a freshness of it. And it's gonna feel like you're breathing again. It's gonna feel like you're, you're, you're operating in your, in your expertise again, in your, in, your, in your grace, in your whatever that word is, like in your zone, like in your anointing. And I felt like as it's expanding, there's so much more that you've been dream of that is even more is available. So Father, we just thank you right now for Margarita. We thank you, God, that she's called and she's anointed. And God, we thank you that this is a new season. God, a new season where she's gonna release a sound. She's gonna release words. She's gonna release new songs being birthed from here. Image Church songs that are gonna go and literally begin to touch other churches and other places. And it's gonna go around, it's gonna go to other nations. In the name of Jesus, Father, we declare that there's things that are gonna be birthed in the spirit in your quiet place. And I saw this reservoir underground. It's a season that God has taken you personally to a deeper expansion. And as you expand more, you're gonna be capable of more. Just like skyscrapers, they have depth. And as you've been maybe a three-story house, three-story building, God is saying this is a season where your foundation is going greater, expanding, and it's time that this skyscraper is going up. In the name of Jesus, and we declare, as a skyscraper goes up, and every floor is almost like a unique and a new anointing, and you're gonna begin to even tap into anointings that you didn't even realize you had. I see you tapping into areas of influence and areas of, of, uh, uh, of impartation, of areas of releasing. You're gonna begin to tap into stuff that you haven't even tapped into before. And there's gonna be a freedom and it's gonna be an easiness. So Father, we just thank you. We thank you for that maturity and that growth and the spirit that's happening. And we thank you it's gonna be released through her in the mighty name of Jesus. And so Father, we declare there's gonna be a sound, even a sound, God, as she begins to even lead teams as she begins to lead people, God, it's not, not only gonna be on her, but it's all of a sudden, the moment people are around her, leading together, it's gonna be on them. And they're gonna feel it. Masaki is gonna begin to feel it. And all of a sudden, Masaki is gonna come alive because you're coming alive. You're gonna begin to activate other people around you. So Father, we declare that in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes deep work, a deep work in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we declare that Image Church is going to be a church that begins to see in the Spirit. I want you, I want you real quick just to put your eyes, sorry, your hand over your eyes, because I just saw this. This is a church that's going to begin to see in the Spirit. You're going to see the spiritual realm like never before in the name of Jesus. God, I declare Eleonora is going to begin to operate in such a word of knowledge. You're going to begin to speak to her in such a unique way. And God, freedom's gonna come. Even as she begins to speak stuff, even in her workplace, God, healing's gonna come. Transformation's gonna come because it's things that are birthed in the spirit. And what's in the spirit gives life. And we declare there's gonna be a life. God, I declare that she's gonna become the top in that company, God. She's gonna begin to open even greater things because the spirit of God is moving through her in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, I declare this is a church that is a church of the seers, a church that sees in the spirit. And God, we declare it's a church that walks in the spirit not walking in the flesh, not by, we're not walking by what we see in the, in, in the flesh, but what we see by faith. And we declare in the mighty name of Jesus, this church is going to begin to walk in faith. In Jesus' name, and eyes to see, eyes to see, eyes to see in Jesus' mighty name. If you're a, if you're a C group leader, or what is it, G group, what is it? A, C, a CG leader, I want you to lift your hands. If you're a CG leader, lift your hands real quick. Father, I thank you. These are the foundations of this church. And God, I thank you for a fresh breath of your presence. God, thank you as they've been faithful to sow, as they've been faithful to give, we declare there's even a fresh anointing coming over every single leader. And God, we declare that even that capacity that Margarita's tapped into, God, we declare that the capacity of leaders is gonna increase in the name of Jesus. Some of you here, you didn't raise your hand, but you should have raised your hand because you know you're a leader and you know you need to be connected here. And some of you, even the Holy Spirit speaking to you right now, through me and he's saying, hey, listen, you are a leader and it's time for you to step up and do what God has called you to do. It's time for you to stop beating around and it's time for you to get planted and it's time for you to put your roots down and watch how God is gonna begin to bless you. Until I got planted, I was useless. I remember Pastor Vita even saying like, 
made me, like, the person you were before you became the youth pastor, the person you are now, like, everything changed. Like, it's like a responsibility came on you and all of a sudden fruit came out of you. I'm telling you what, the moment you get planted is the moment you flourish. The moment you begin to produce fruit. Some of you here, you're supposed to be leading, you're supposed to be discipling, you're supposed to be pastoring some people. And it's time you start in the name of Jesus. So you do whatever steps need to be taken. So Father, we just release right now over every group leader right now in the name of Jesus, we declare even an anointing of multiplication. Their capacity to grow. If their capacity was two people, it's gonna grow to five people. If their capacity was five people, it's gonna grow to 10 people. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we declare even a growth of capacity of people to be discipled and be touched by your love in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mark, put your hands out real quick. Hold your, actually, hold, hold, hold your hands together, you and your wife. Father, we declare over this couple, God, they're here for such a time as this. And you guys are gonna ra- rise to the occasion it's almost like in the NBA, I'm, I'm, I'm a sports guy. When it's time for playoffs, it's almost like people play differently. And it's like a moment for you guys. It's like, it, it, there's a moment in your life right now where it's a very catalytic moment. And I see you guys rising to the occasion. Rising to the occasion. So Father, we release right now over them in the name of Jesus. That excellent spirit that excellent spirit that's inside of them is gonna come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we declare there's more, there's more for them. I don't know if it's a physical thing, but I see like, even like real estate. I see, I see land. I don't even know what that means. I don't know if you guys are looking for places to buy or what, but I, I just see, I don't know if it's a spiritual thing, but I feel like it's a physical thing. Even God's gonna expand your territory physically. And God, so we just declare whatever house they're looking for, God, we declare that's gonna be unbelievable. It's gonna be so easy. It's gonna be so, it's gonna be so smooth in the name of Jesus. We declare that expansion of that in the name of Jesus. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. If you're here and you wanna operate, this is my last prayer and I'm doing, I promise. I just feel, I just feel the river flowing. When the river starts flowing, it's hard to shut it off. If you're here and you're ready to start stepping into the next level of the spiritual gifts, you're ready to start operating in a new level. I want you to run up to the front real quick. Just run up to the front real quick. You're ready to start words of knowledge, words of wisdom, healing, tongues, interpretation of tongues, discernment. Come on, if you're ready to go to the next level, for God to unlock that, this is one of the anointings on my life. I can't give you something I don't have, but I can give you something that I walk in. And I want to release this on this church because I believe there's something powerful that God is going to begin to release in this place. And it's a church that's going to begin to walk in the depth of the Spirit of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, if you're hungry for it, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Take one more, everyone take one more big step forward. One more big step forward. There's more people coming in the aisles. If you're hungry for it, come on. As your faith, so be it unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we release it right now. We release it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Wow. Wow. I feel an anointing on you. There's almost like people are saying, like, like, where's your head sometimes? Like, oh, people will say things like, why are you out somewhere? Come back to earth. But actually, it's your anointing. You're in this world, but you're not of this world. And people will even say like, hey, come back to reality. You're like, no, 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 I actually am in reality. I'm gonna, I'm gonna release to you from that reality. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we release that over her in Jesus' name. God, I thank you. That new level, God, of your presence right now in the name of Jesus. Father, right now, we just release your presence to come like never before. And we release right now the activation of the Spirit of God just like you did, God, in the upper room where the Holy Spirit began to fall on them and all of a sudden fire began to come upon them. So we release a fire of God, a fire of God in the name of Jesus. God, I declare there's a fire. There's a fire coming over you in the name of Jesus. You're gonna begin to see the Spirit like you've never seen before. I see words of knowledge, words of wisdom. God's gonna begin to release those through you in Jesus' name. So Father, right now we declare, let that fire begin to burn in Jesus' name. And we declare there's a release of that in the name of Jesus. There's a release of that in the name of Jesus. My man right here, the tall guy. Lift, lift both your hands real quick. You're a warrior. You're a man of God and you're dressed in the armor of God. You already got everything you need. It's time for you to be activated. And I felt like God says, it's, now is your season of activation. You have everything you need. You got all the equipment. You got the whole thing. You got the sword. You got the shield. You got it all. It's already there. And so right now we activate you into who you are. You're a general in the army. You're not just a follower, but you're a man of God and you're a general. So Father, we release that. He's a warrior. 
He goes after that. He doesn't give up. He doesn't get weak, but he's strong. You are strong in the spirit and you're gonna begin to do what God calls you to do. And so we declare this is your season of activation in the name of Jesus. This is that season of the power of God is gonna begin to flow to you and through you in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, we release that over you. We release that over you in Jesus' name. So God, we declare over every single person here. God, we declare that Ben is tapping into a new season. Wow, Ben, you're gonna prophesy like you've never prophesied. What you've seen has been seed form. What you've seen God do through you is seed form. But that seed has matured and it became roots. And those roots matured and all of a sudden you came above ground. And God, I declare that Ben is literally walking stepping into a season where the things he's seen have, are minimal to what he's going to see. And God, we declare there's even a prophetic anointing for him in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So Father, we thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your goodness. And we thank you that right now, God, these hands, there's a fire coming on them. There's a fire coming on the inside of Melissa in the name of Jesus to burn, to burn, to burn in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your presence, oh God. We thank you for your goodness, oh God. And we declare that you're doing something special in this church. And God, there's an activation happening even right now. And we just release. This is a church that's gonna operate and function in the gifts of the Spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Victoria and Alec, I declare over you guys. Wow, 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 wow. You have seen influence. But you're stepping into a season where you're going to begin to not just influence people, but you're going to influence influential people. And I see God beginning to open up doors and even a multiplication. And you even already maybe felt parts of that even since you've been married. But people are going to come into your house, people that are successful in their spheres, people that are doing big things in their spheres, and you're going to speak into those people, almost like shepherds. You're going to speak into people that are already moving and grooving. They're already doing stuff. They're already, they're already successful in their areas. And God is going to bring people of high caliber to you guys. And you're going to begin to speak life into them. You're going to begin to release a spirit into them. And so God, we declare an influence over people who are influential and speaking into people who speak into other people. And God, as they touch one, that one is gonna begin to multiply and touch so many because of that one. Because they're gonna gonna raise up leaders and they're they're gonna speak into leaders who are gonna speak into other people. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we declare that over them. And we declare even, wow, I even see even new doors opening up. Almost like there's a certain door you guys wanted to go through, but it's almost like there's been a little bit of resistance in that door. And right next to it, I see is almost like another door. And this door is open, wide, wide open, wide open. Don't fight the resistance. Walk through what God already opened for you, what God already made available for you. And watch how as you begin to walk through that, there's gonna be a grace to flow. There's gonna be a grace to move. There's gonna be a grace to disciple. There's gonna be a grace to influence. And so we release that over you in the mighty name of Jesus. And we declare the finances are not gonna be an issue but there's a blessing of even wealth, to create wealth. Innovative, creative wealth. You won't even have to worry about that stuff, it's gonna just happen. It's gonna just take place. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for what you've done here at Image Church. I thank you for what you're birthing, that fresh wind. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want us just to lift our hand, let's go back one more time into that chorus. I want to just to worship. Lift your hands. Yeah. Pour, your out. Pour it out. A holy anointing. In this church. Power of your presence. In the city. Pour, your spirit out. Pour it out. Pour, your spirit Pour it out. out.
again I just wanted to remind you if you need prayer for any reason or maybe you feel it on your heart that God is making you uh, calling you to make a decision to give your life to Jesus this morning we would love to pray with you on the side of the stage right there it says need prayer come on and join us whatever you feel in your heart we would love to believe with you join with you um, and this sun not Sunday but Wednesday we have our prayer night. Come on, it's one of my favorite nights here at the Image Church. So bring yourself here, bring a friend here. Come on, it's gonna be powerful. Don't leave without saying hi to someone new because we're a community here, we're a family here, so we wanna do life together. With all that being said, we thank you, we love you, and we will see you next week. We'll see you at prayer, actually.